When you use molecular mechanics, it treats every bond like a spring. So that means that when we have a stronger bond, just like when you're pulling a spring apart as you pull, that's when it feels a little bit weaker and it's easier to pull. So that means that you have, when you have a weaker bond, you're gonna have um, actually a longer bond. And when you have a stronger bond, it's actually gonna be shorter. So that's why you look at it using molecular mechanics. But when you use ab initio, it uses quantum mechanic equations to basically calculate the probability or the chance of finding an atom in a certain location. And you can also use ab initio to calculate the charge that's on each atom. So what we want to do is see how confirmation or the way that the flexible rings and chains affect how well this cell functions. And the way we do that is by investigating the energy. Basically, when you have a lower energy, you have a more stable molecule. And we want to see what kind of confirmation leads to a low, to a low energy. Since this was a new technique, we wanted to use smaller molecules besides our CADPR. So we use 2 prime DA and F3 double prime DDA. The important, parts, the important difference between these two molecules is that you have an OH here in 2 prime DA, and you have a fluorine atom here in F3 double prime DDA. So the way we did this is that we actually took our rivals from the database that was already built into the program, and we made the few changes that I spoke about before, adding the OH and adding the fluorine. Then after that, we used ab initio not to calculate where the atoms are, but only to calculate the charge because we still want to go by molecular mechanics to detect where the atom should be in the molecule. After that, we built 20 different confirmations. These confirmations represent a cycle of changes that can happen within each molecule. So then we can see different trends that happen as we do our research. We extracted the ribose ring angles and the proton-proton angles. Our ribose ring angle is an angle that consists of, it has to have four atoms, and has to consist of either only carbons or three carbons and this one oxygen here. When you have a proton or proton angle, it has to start with the proton and end with the proton. So one example could be going from this hydrogen, this carbon, then carbon two, and then the final hydrogen, H2 here. After that, we plotted the energies as a function against the phase angle. Basically, we labeled each confirmation by the phase angle and then looked at their energy so that we could see different trends. So our results. The first thing that we notice is that um, when we have, for F3 double prime DDA, there were two types of gamma torsions that were shown. One was at negative 60 degrees and one was at negative 180 degrees. What we thought was that for our molecule CADPR that it would be better to have negative 180 degrees. So we thought that in these small molecules it would be the same way. But actually what we found is that there was a stronger preference for it to be at negative 160 degrees because as you can see, the energy is actually lower at these parts compared to the 180 degrees where the energy is higher, therefore it's less stable. We just made a quick little graph here to sum it all up to show that it's mostly at negative 60 degrees. There were a few times when we tried changing it to negative 180 degrees and then we made a few changes here about these three confirmations but it mostly stayed at negative 60 degrees. And also for 2 prime DA, there were no outstanding um, results to look at. What we did find though is that when we did the second trial, which is this pink trial, that when we started it at the confirmation that was at its lowest energy, or the most stable, which was at 144, when we started there and then we did the whole cycle, we actually had a full cycle of more stable molecules. So in conclusion, we see that using the app initial charges actually improved our results and made it more accurate. And we were able to find the, the more stable series of confirmations. F3 double prime DDA may have a preference for gamma minus, which, was, which is the negative 60 degrees, except for the few north confirmations. Those are the confirmations that were all the way back in the beginning and in the end of our graph. This research is theoretical. That means that we're not sure whether this is going to lead us to where we need to go and taking it out of the computer and doing it in vitro and in real life. But the reason why this is important because as I told you before, this helps regulate the heartbeat. And we think that there is this molecule that it binds to before it binds to the binding down receptor to release calcium. We don't know what this molecule is, but we think that if we can make a molecule from CADPR that's a little bit better, that can bond to the second molecule and stay attached to it, we can identify it. 
Once we're able to identify what the second molecule is, we will be able to learn more about the disease, cause of the heart disease, and then maybe learn how to prevent it in the future. Unfortunately, that might be past my time. Life is too short. <laughs> so this is my bibliography. My acknowledgments go to my mentor, Dr. Stephen M. Graham, the St. John's University staff, Dr. Sat, and of course the HCS staff. <laughs>